Hello again Struck Club, today I'm bringing you another build video for Torchlight 3's early access phase and this one is uh, for the Realmaster plus Coldheart combo. I've decided to call the build Freezing Slammer Realmaster Coldheart build uh, and um, uh, if you wanna skip to certain parts of the video such as the skills, the gear or the gameplay at the end you can use the timestamps which are in the description of this video. So let's talk about the build first. Uh, the first thing you probably would notice is that it feels a little bit underpowered uh, compared to some other builds and this is not the class, um, it's not a Realm Master issue, it's a Cold Heart issue and it's mostly an issue with um, certain things like snowstorm uh, tier 3 bonus not really working uh, in the way it says it works it doesn't make you 100% crit um, enemies that are frozen and the other and major reason uh, of the weakness of the cold heart uh, when it's set up in this way is that frost skin frost skin has 35 seconds cooldown and this is huge, this is a huge cooldown and it's definitely something that I really sincerely hope the developers would consider looking into and maybe getting it down to 10 or even 5 seconds when uh, at level 5 because right now Frost Skin is needed to trigger Frost Novas from Breaking Point and if you only trigger a Breaking Point uh, every 35 seconds or 70 without uh, investing uh, all, all 5 skill points into the skill it's just not worth it compare it to other relics and you're gonna see it's just not as strong as builds with the electrode relic or builds with the flaming destroyer relic or even with bane and spread of death or with the um, uh, rupture on the blood drinker apart from that the build is decent uh, and it does do damage but the damage comes from the realm master skills so uh, with one hander i can do on the hardest difficulty on ridiculous around 200,000 damage hits and i can even push it further if i min max more my gear and now let's uh, show you the skills first and then the rest and here we are at the segment where i talk about the skill points uh, allocation what skills i've selected uh, and uh, why i've selected them and as i said at the beginning of the video um, certain things are a bit underpowered and um, um, they really need a boost uh, certain things are booked and once they get fixed um, they would make the, bit, the, the build a little bit stronger so First, let's talk uh, about uh, the things I I could suggest using, um, even though uh, I'm not using them myself. You can see 0 points in Conductor, 38 Cold Heart, 32 Slammer. But if you want to put points into Conductor, there's two options. Flamethrower Car, Tier 2, 4 points of this with the Conductor's uh, uh, plus 2 levels helmet, could give you 10% Relic Energy Charge Rate, which stacks up well with this. 25 or 35%. You can get another 10 15 from items if you're lucky. Another thing that could be useful is 10% cooldown for Realm Master skills from Mortar Car Tier 2. The other things are not gonna be great for this build. We're not doing a basic attack build, so Shocking Crowns Tier 2 doesn't work for us. This is train, this is a pet bonus, I don't think we need it. This is train stuff, and this is train stuff. So if you want to invest into the conductor, there's only two options uh, that I think are okay for this build. Even though I have the basic attack here, I don't find the time to use it. Uh, I'm so busy with my other rotation, so I don't have time to use basic attacks. I don't have a window of opportunity to squeeze in. Maybe sometimes I could find myself using it, but it's mostly accidental. Now I'm gonna talk about... Um, about um, maybe it's gonna be a little bit of a rant so prepare yourself uh, for a rant a rant about why i think the cold heart is so underpowered compared to the other relics see breaking point is such a great skill uh, when frost skin breaks unleash a frost nova dealing 154 percent weapon damage that's at level 5 i think it's 110 or so percent weapon damage otherwise uh, and freezing um, the enemies for one second and you also get HP up to 10% uh, at level 5 but this one relies on frost skin and frost skin here is the shitty part of things in this relic so frost skin is at 35 seconds cooldown when maxed out at level 5 when it's at level 1 this is 
uh, at 70 seconds cooldown. And that's terrible. That's terrible. This means um, you're only going to be triggering at best uh, this 154% weapon damage every 35 seconds. And that's... Just compare this, compare this to the Electrode. Where you have uh, things like Thunder Strike. Which can trigger much more often. So let's imagine that the developers decide to buff this uh, skill and uh, reduce the cooldown to 5 seconds when maxed out or 10 seconds when um, when not leveled up. Uh, I think it's gonna be amazing because let's imagine every 5 seconds you're preventing a one, um, one single hit's damage, all the damage from a single hit and you're doing that uh, breaking point every 5 seconds. You're not gonna be super overpowered, you're not gonna be stronger than someone with the electrode who is uh, using um, uh, thunder strikes proking. You're not gonna be stronger with, than someone who's using spread of death um, to to spread those missiles all the time with the right uh, gear, with the right uh, setup. You're not gonna be stronger than someone with uh, magma burst and uh, firestorms on the flaming destroyer that is using those procs. It's gonna be super reasonable. Five seconds when maxed out, ten seconds when when it's uh, it's not maxed out. Um, maybe some people would say, but five seconds is too little of a cooldown. Well, I would be happy if they make it 10 and 20 instead of 5 and 10, but I think it really deserves 5 and 10 seconds. And this is my one of my runs. Another rant uh, I would like to mention is, it's not more, it, it's not as much of a run, but something that you should keep in mind. Uh, the build is gonna get stronger when Snowstorm Tier 3 gets fixed. Um, not long ago, the developers uh, capped crit chance at 40%, so uh, things that make us always critically hit, like this Tier 3 bonus or the crit chance uh, um, shrine, now kind of get affected by this capped crit chance and the crit chance stays at 40% which is the cap. I can demonstrate it quickly uh, so you can see what I mean. Um, so just give me a few seconds and I'm gonna show you uh, what I mean by saying that this is broken. Uh, it's broken in, in the way where uh, I don't always critically hit. I don't always critically hit and um, um, it's supposed to actually critically hit every time I use um, something on Snowstorm. So let's activate Snowstorm. Here, Snowstorm is active. Now let's start um, hitting the dummy. It's now frozen and you can see I'm critting but not all the time. So the dummy, this thing that you're seeing there, is um, it's frozen. Uh, and that's another bug. It doesn't freeze it for 2 seconds, it freezes it for uh, 10 seconds. And you could see uh, not every hit was uh, critical while the, the dummy was frozen. So, yeah, definitely definitely not 100%. I think it's capping at 40%. And um, this brings me to the other bug, as I said. Um, fro Snowstorm uh, will receive some sort of a nerf, but it's more of a fix rather than a nerf. It's supposed to freeze the enemies for 2 seconds, but it's freezing them for 10. So... Uh, once they fix the tier 3 bonus of Snowstorm, once they rebalance Frost Skin to be um, just as fun as it and as useful as the procs on the other relics, um, this would be an amazingly fun build to play on any type of melee build. Frost Skin, Breaking Point, uh, Snowstorm, Cold Front and uh, top it off with some Ice Shield. Now I'm gonna talk about Slammer skills and come back to the relic skills in a moment. So for the slammer skills, um, uh, in any Realm Master build I take two things, which I think are a must-have. A must-have is the tier 2 Lantern Flash bonus, which gives you 65% damage versus stunt, binded, swat targets, and the tier 1, not 2, tier 1 bonus of Busting Charge, which gives you extra 20% vulnerability for Busting Charge, which takes the whole skill's vulnerability from 25 to 30%. So combine this 30% vulnerability for 6 seconds um, after using Blasting Charge with the passive tier 2 Lantern Flash bonus uh, damage versus stun binded or swat. And if an enemy is vulnerable and stunned slash binded slash swat, you're getting 95% extra damage. 
and that's just great. You don't have to use Lantern Flash on your skill bar, it can just uh, remain here as a passive only. Um, I've taken tier 2 Busting Charge because I like that extra damage reduction, but you can max out the damage reduction with just Hammer Spin tier 3. Hammer Spin, if it hits an enemy, triggers Fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit gets triggered with Spike Drive, with Pound, um, and anything else that is melee, like a basic attack on a melee weapon. And um, this triggers fighting sp Fighter Spirit and Fighter Spirit gives you 50% damage reduction. The cap is 90% so with the tier 3 Hammer Spin you get um, that cap. But um, while Hammer Spin is on cooldown or while you don't have the bubble uh, from tier 3 Hammer Spin, um, if you have Busting Charge tier 2 this increases the Fighter Spirit damage reduction from 50 to 70. So it's not uh, maxing it out, but it means every time you get Fighter Spirit you're gonna have 70 instead of 50. And um, the tier 3 Hammer Spin uh, is gonna make it from 70 to 90. So it's not gonna give you more, because uh, the cap is 90, but it's still nice to have Busting Charge tier 2. But if you don't want Busting Charge tier 2, those 3 skill points you can spend on Ice Shield. Now let's talk about Pound. Great skill, gives you 20% slammer skill damage, which is all of those skills here. 20% um, 20, 20 extra damage on, the, on those, and it stacks with other items with slammer skill damage uh, additively, uh, from the way I've understood it uh, stacks. Uh, and it's great, I think it's amazing. Um, it does decent damage as a skill. Now we have Spike Drive as well. So you can see, by the way, the endurance bonus of pound is basic attack related. I don't uh, I don't care about this endurance bonus because I'm not using basic attacks uh, the way I set the build. So spike drive gains a charge only after spending endurance with any skill. Hammer spin gains all charges of pound, busting charge, and flying picks. Hammer spin right now is bugged and it doesn't give me charges. It gives me only one charge for spike drive when I use the endurance, and that's not from the hammer spin bonus but from the spike drive uh, bonus. But hammer spin does give me all three charges of pound uh, recharged. So um, sometimes I would see hammer spin refilling two charges of spike drive, sometimes it's gonna be only one. So it's kind of a bug there. But spike drive is great damage, it can slow the enemies and by slowing the enemies uh, for six seconds it lets us proc lantern flash. So this slows, this stuns, this blinds. Uh, and um, those effects let us benefit from that extra damage. And um, once they fix some of the bugs uh, with charge skills and uh, other bugs, this build would be pretty decent and nice to play. So hopefully it's soon. I can't wait to, to see the things fixed. Now let's move on to the relic skills. You can see I've got 10 points Snowstorm, 10 points Cold Front. Um, 5 points energizer uh, which I think uh, speaks for itself why relic energy charge rate being faster means faster um, usages of snowstorm which means uh, uh, faster spending of the, the energy to get cold front faster. If you want to use uh, cold front more often uh, put 1 point into ice golem or 3 points uh, if you want to benefit from the buggy shield aura. Shield aura is right now buggy and it triggers things uh, like this passive on basic attack as long as you're wearing the right weapon. Things like the Stormblade and uh, Sneku Stick and Maestro Sword. So anything that gets triggered on basic attack, the chilling aura of the pet triggers it. Um, this is a bug, it's not intended and it's getting fixed so don't rely on it. But if you want to have some weird fun, you could experiment with it. Um, but yeah, the, the golem would... Uh, melt through your energy if you have uh, uh, the energy generated quickly and it would allow you to get more cold front but the way I like playing the build is to just keep snowstorm up more for longer than than having the ice golem so I'm not getting cold front as often as I can by relying only on snowstorm but I'm getting a very high uptime of snowstorm by not wasting the energy with other skills and I've got 3 points into Ice Shield, 3 points into Ice Shield for that extra duration. But uh, if you want uh, the pet sickle, you can remove points from certain things. For example, you can remove points from here uh, or from here. 
um, and uh, get the, that pet icicles or you can just get the the tier 2 bonus and as I said you can get 3 points from here or another thing you could do is um, uh, I normally wear this helmet this uh, face breaker mask because it gives me plus 1 spike drive and plus 1 hammer spin but I reworked my skills just for this build to, to not confuse people with the extra skill points so this means I can remove one point from here and I can remove one point from here when I'm wearing that helmet and that gives me two points which brings my ice shield to level 5 which means I just need to find one extra point and I can get uh, a point from breaking point <laughs> or a point from energizer uh, and that's gonna be fine that's gonna be good enough for me to get ice shield tier 2 uh, I still, uh, I still think uh, Cold Front level 10 is a must have, but if you don't want Cold Front tier, um, tier 3, you can get tier 2 or just tier 1 or even um, just level 1 Cold Front if you don't want that much damage on it and if you don't want the freezing. But the freezing will be nice once this is fixed to freeze for 2 seconds and you want to be freezing more often to benefit from the cri critically hitting frozen enemies always. Uh, when uh, snowstorm is active um, uh, this would be a very good synergy and I like the extra icicles uh, I definitely like that but uh, there's ways to rework the skills indeed um, so you can experiment with certain certain things so snowstorm I think you should always keep it maxed out uh, for now uh, hopefully it gets fixed soon and yeah, um, I think I've kind of mentioned some things that you can improve. If you want to go for a basic attack build, of course, use large boars, but um, that's kind of it for the skills. Let's talk about the legendarium. Uh, must have would be the cosmic breastplate here, unless you're wearing it and you don't have a good blue one. But eventually, if you want to min max it, cosmic breastplate here with three other pieces equipped and wearing three other pieces of the set. Berserk Crusher in my opinion is a must have, extra charge for spike drive and extra charge for pound uh, is amazing for this build. And here is the thing that is flexible. I like using um, a centrifugal demolisher because I get one more hammer spin charge, uh, it does a little bit more damage and it has faster cooldown. And it gives me good mobility. But there's options battery ram and bus breaker are two amazing options this makes um, this makes pound stronger and this makes blasting uh, charge not use endurance um, and always gain its endurance bonus uh, which means uh, when you're using blasting charge you're not wasting your uh, endurance uh, which you might want to save for hammer spin so you can refuel spike drive um, and that's actually pretty pretty good way of doing it uh, there's other options as I mentioned uh, actually uh, I, as I will mention in the next segment um, there is uh, a good synergy for many builds to use the arc powered uh, the arc powered shoulders it's very nice movement speed extra damage for 15 seconds to nearby enemies then there's the skittering shoulders and then there's the arc powered or skittering boots so arc powered boots, arc powered shoulders or skittering shoulders for defense or skittering boots for more damage. So so there are things that you could wear um, that um, that could replace the centrifugal demolisher if you if you don't uh, want them. Um, but I definitely suggest going for the centrifugal demolisher if you want to experience the build the way I like playing it. And now this brings us to pet skills. For the pet skills uh, on Realm Master builds, that's mostly how my skills look. Um, I like using this because that's 15% crit chance as a passive. Uh, and that means you don't need to get that much crit chance on gear because the limit is uh, 40. But if you want to get uh, a two-hander equipped and if you're uh, stacking uh, enough crit chance to get close to the limit or to cap it without needing this skill, then replace it with a different aura like the defense one because you're melee or the movement speed one because well it's always nice to run faster or even the block chance one uh, if you wanna stack um, block chance which caps at 40% and maybe stack some evasion which also caps at 40 
I definitely suggest using Screeching Stone because uh, it's a nice synergy with Lantern Flash Tier 2, but it's optional. You, you can even use Immobilize or anything else. You can maybe stack Battle Cry with Defensive Posture, or you can use Pass the Gas. But uh, Healing Friendship, I think, is a must have. Keep Healing Friendship. Whatever you do, I think you should keep Healing Friendship. Um, but this is my preferred setup. Uh, even if you just want to replace Battle Cry with this, that's not a bad choice if you feel like uh, you're dying uh, a lot. Uh, it's a good option. Now let's show you in the next segment some suggestions for the gear. And here we are at the gear segment uh, where I would talk about items and suggested roles and affixes that go with those items. Let's start with the weapon. There's three choices of how you can go on about it. One would be a two-hander, which is the more uh, kind of uh, glass cannon version, because um, uh, you get um, a lot of uh, damage and crit chance there, if you get the right uh, affixes. Then the second option would be one-handed and shield, the more defensive option. Uh, and then for more utility, uh, it's one-handed and off-hand. Uh, an off-hand would not be able to give you as much um, offensive um, uh, extra damage as a two-hander, uh, or at least that's how the developers uh, seem to want it to be. That's how uh, I guess the game is designed. Uh, of course, uh, you would need to get the, the most perfect rolls on a two-handed weapon um, and also get um, socket on it to, to make it compete. And right now I find uh, uh, one-handed weapons a little bit more um, attractive. Um, Especially knowing that um, there's there's less things that I need to to match. I only need to worry about two affixes in the middle, whereas with a two-handed weapon you need to get three affixes in the middle. And it's super difficult to get three uh, flat damage affixes in the middle or um, flat damage and crit damage. So so keeping that in mind, uh, let's talk about um, all three versions quickly. With uh, a two-handed weapon you would want flat damage at the top crit chance at the top, uh, you always get those. You can get something different than flat damage and crit damage at the top, but you would want to get as high as possible flat and crit chance. Um, um, not crit damage, sorry, I said crit damage earlier, but I meant crit chance. So, crit chance and flat damage at the top, and in the middle you want either three times uh, flat damage. You cannot get uh, the same one twice, uh, as far as I know, but you can get one that's matching um, another one in a socket, uh, and only on a two-hander can you get that matching one. Uh, so if you get three times flat damage uh, in the middle and then another uh, flat damage in a socket, you're gonna get enough enough DPS. Uh, alternatively, you can get two times flat damage and uh, crit damage, two times flat damage and crit chance uh, in the middle, but still in the socket you want flat damage. On a weapon uh, that's one-handed, uh, you cannot roll uh, the same affix twice. So if this is electric damage in the middle at the bottom, it cannot be electric. It can be any type of other flat damage, but it cannot be electric. And on a weapon like this one, um, you can see it's got ice damage in the middle. That means at the bottom I cannot get ice uh, in the socket. And on a weapon like this one, you see it's got poison and electric in the middle. And if this one had a socket, um, the socket would not be able to to roll as poison or electric, but it could drop. Uh, it could roll uh, as any other um, any other uh, flat damage. So good things to look for in a weapon would be if you're lucky, three affixes in the middle. Perfect. If you're unlucky, two affixes in the middle, but you want those affixes to be flat damage. Uh, uh, ideally, all of them. If if not, maybe one of them could be crit damage. Um, or crit chance or damage to slammer skills and things like that but um, the more flat damage the better it is for you uh, and this is why this weapon that I'm wearing is um, is better than that other one uh, even though the other one gives more uh, flat altogether 6.5k uh, even if I remove the electric damage from the boots see I'm 12,500 with this one 12,105 
and this from 12,500 um, of course um, it gets the crit damage so let's look at this number 7,347 with this percent damage um, 7,900 so I got like 600 extra uh, electric damage which is pretty good pretty good now this brings us to off hands on off hands uh, regardless whether it's a shield or a or a focus I very strongly suggest using chance to swallow chance to swallow lasts for five seconds uh, and uh, you want chance to swallow uh, so you can benefit from the tier 2 lantern flash bonus this can also swallow this can blind this can stun but having extra chance to swallow on items definitely helps you a lot so I would suggest on a focus item, if you're using a focus item to get at the top endurance again, you won't get a so uh, you, you won't get anything other than endurance again when playing Realm Master at the top. At the bottom, in the middle, I mean, uh, you can get chance to swallow and elect uh, any type of damage, flat damage, or you can get uh, chance to swallow and damage with slammer skills, uh, or you can get rid of the chance to swallow and get flat damage and uh, damage to slammer skills. And then at the bottom, I would suggest getting HP if you're wearing um, if you're wearing a focus. If you're wearing a shield, you can get defense or HP, or you can get um, a chance to bind on block, which is pretty nice uh, enchantment for a shield. Uh, on a shield, you want um, the flat built-in defense. So this one is level 57, and it only gives me 4,000. But you can get over 5,000 between 5 and 6,000 flat defense uh, on a level 60 shield, especially if it's those symmetry ones. Uh, so you want um, over 5,000 defense uh, at the top and over 15% chance to block at the top. At the bottom, chance to slow HP, defense, uh, things like that. Um, uh, would be great now for the set items I would suggest wearing there's four items and you have to choose um, there's a total of six but um, I suggest uh, choosing between four and wearing three out of those four you can either choose a helmet um, and then shoulders and uh, and uh, gauntlets and boots uh, and the boots can be blue when you're wearing all of those three or you can maybe wear a helmet uh, gauntlets and boots and have blue shoulders or wear um, the shoulders the gauntlets and the boots and have a blue helmet uh, I kind of don't have the boots so when I'm playing I'm actually playing with this helmet and with um, that leg armor this is uh, what my setup looks like right now uh, when I'm playing but um, for the for the for the build video, I wanted to unequip this helmet. Um, that gives me the extra two skill points, so I can just show you how the cosmic helmet. Even though you don't use conductor skills, unless you decide to use it, um, it could be nice. Of course, this one is level eight, and I didn't have a very high level one. Uh, but what you would want on a helmet is uh, flat defense at the top, or maybe block chance at the top if you want to stack that, or even HP if you want to stack HP, because this build benefits a lot from HP. Then you want uh, something like um, um, skill plus one skill level to a skill you're using. If you can get it twice, even better. But you you want to try and get at least plus one skill level to a skill you're using and have more than one point invested into. And you want crit chance. Crit chance is very nice. Um, from a helmet endurance again uh, is also nice but it's not a must have uh, you get a ton of endurance again as it is um, so keep that in mind if you're going for the helmet if you don't go for a legendary one you can use something like this or this one or two skills of uh, the ones i use being boosted um, uh, there's also things like chance to shock uh, chance to uh, bleed and so on uh, you could probably try and get a chance to freeze if you can it's not gonna be bad um, combo for this build now for the shoulders you would want relic energy cost but uh, I think the higher priority goes for crit damage crit damage probably should be the highest priority on a shoulder once you get crit damage uh, second priority probably would be relic energy cost uh, or um, 
relic energy recharge rate and um, other things that boost your DPS or utility and of course uh, flat defenses or elemental defenses of a specific element uh, just avoid gold drop gold work uh, avoid it gear work is not bad it caps at 100 so keep that in mind uh, some maps would give you 25% or 50% gear work so it's not a bad stat um, it gives you more items it doesn't give you better items it gives you more item drops uh, from gear work on the gauntlets um, uh, you could get um, flat uh, defense or block chance or evasion and then at the bottom in, um, in the middle you would want uh, maybe crit chance or crit chance versus vault or crit chance versus something else that you're doing maybe more defenses but something that's super important to try and get is damage with slammer skills if you can get it it's amazing and chance to freeze would also be pretty nice um, so keep that in mind, uh, you can stack damage with slammer skills across multiple items and get a very very good DPS increase. You can see one item here is giving me 17, this one is 16 and this one is 15. So that's like over 40%, like close to 50 almost percent um, from 3 items. Uh, and that's a lot of damage to slammer skills. So keep that in mind. Um, this brings us to boots. Boots, uh, you would want something like crit damage and then bonus elemental damage that matches your highest element. And this bonus elemental damage can also roll on chest and leg armor. And you can stack bonus elemental here, here and here and get close to 30%, 20-something percent bonus elemental damage. And if your weapon is something like this, uh, or even something like this or whatever something that just uh, has multiple um, types of the same flat damage so um, decent uh, high flat damage at the top and uh, a matching affix either as, a, as an enchantment as a socket or as ro or road in the middle and then you can try and stack the same element if you can on the chest piece uh, together with a percent chest and leg armor can roll with flat damage and it can also roll with crit damage and it can also roll with um, um, with a bonus um, to a specific elemental uh, I'm not sure whether crit chance rolls on chests but I know crit chance rolls on legs so if you can get crit damage and flat it's not bad if you can get flat damage and percent damage it's not bad um, but try to get flat damage. Flat damage is the highest priority on the chest, even if you don't get the elemental. Even if it doesn't match your your weapon, um, even if it doesn't match your highest attack, it's still a good thing. The same goes for the legs. Try to try to get flat damage is the highest priority. Um, it's not bad to get another flat if you're lucky, or to get uh, a percent um, elemental that matches it, uh, or to get crit damage, or to get crit chance but um, a flat damage is uh, a must have if you can get it and uh, I think we've kind of uh, covered uh, the, the combos um, of course while you're leveling you're probably gonna be using um, non-meta stuff so you're, you're probably gonna be using things like cosmic pants at certain points you might be using the cosmic chest um, um, equipped and so on if you don't have flat ones uh, there's many options now let's talk about uh, options if you're not, uh, if, if you're going for helmet, gauntlets, boots from the cosmic, you can equip arc powered shoulders or a decent rolled blue one. Um, and if you're not wearing a legendary one of those and you have those legendary, in, or you have maybe um, those three legendary in one, this one blue or this one blue, uh, there aren't any other helmets that I would suggest wearing. So I would suggest just go for a blue one if you're not wearing the legendary. Um, there aren't any other gauntlets that I would say they are great wear them if you're not wearing the legendary but for the boots there's some options and I think the, the arc powered or the skittering uh, or even the woods beast uh, could be interesting uh, could be interesting uh, but not the woods beast as much as the arc powered boots and the, sk and the skittering boots uh, if you don't have good blue ones and you're wearing those three as uh, legendary so you don't need them the cosmic boots so 
Now moving on to pet items. Mm, the perfect one is the drat neck band in my opinion. Um, the perfect color. Drat neck band uh, on pet hits heals you 3% HP for you and the pet. Stack this with faster cooldown for pet active skills and stack this with uh, pet attack speed and you've got yourself something amazing. The faster your pet attacks the faster it heals and if you're using an invigorating token um, that means the faster your pet attack uh, the faster it can recharge um, its skills with the token of invigoration. On pet hits 10% chance to refresh cooldowns of pet's active skills. So if you combine this invigorating token with uh, stacking uh, faster cooldown for pet active skills and this can roll up to like 15% um, I had it rolled somewhere with 15% I can show you uh, and it's pretty nice I mean you can go for a crit build on the pet and stack crit chance crit damage but the way I played is I try to get the invigoration token and maybe the phoenix token or a nova token or the bartering one if I want to send the pet to the town while in maps and then I try to get as much attack speed as I can and as much faster cooldown for pet active skills as I can. Um, it's not bad to get certain uh, chances to poison, shock etc but for this build it's not a must have. It's not a must have to have chance to freeze or whatever. And uh, yeah that pretty much sums up um, I think the items unless we missed something. Yeah that pretty much sums it up. So let's show you some more gameplay next. And here we are at the gameplay segment where I show you a little bit more of the build in action so you can see what it can do. Uh, and I would talk about uh, the skill rotation, which skills I use um, followed by which other skills and just how I rotate the skill and how I make combos. And uh, the Slammer 3 on the Realm Master class is actually perfect for doing combos and rotating uh, the skills. And it's like, uh, it's like dancing on the battlefield uh, while you're playing uh, a Slammer Realm Master, regardless whether it's with uh, this relic or another relic subclass. The main reason for this would be the smooth and nice animations of Hammer Spin, of Spike Drive and of Pound. Uh, those skills can also be comboed together, so it's like a mini game of comboing the skills. Right now there are a lot of bugs with skills that use charges and Hammer Spin, Spike Drive and Pound and Blasting Charge uh, are the charge skills of this build and that's kind of like half of the skills we use. So now once those bugs are fixed the build would be a little bit better, uh, smoother and uh, nicer to play. But let's talk about the rotation. So. If you consider uh, Hammer Spin replenishing all charges of Spike Drive and Pound uh, once it consumes its Endurance bonus, that means if you time your Hammer Spin and use it at the right time, uh, it's gonna be great. Uh, apart, apart from that, you can get charges for Spike Drive by consuming Endurance with other skills, such as Blasting Charge if you're not wearing the Blast Breaker, or Pound, or even uh, things like Lantern Flash. And combine that with um, Snowstorm that freezes the enemies around you and gives you 25% extra damage. Combine that with Ice Shield that keeps shooting icicles that hit enemies around you. And then on top of that add Cold Front that adds more damage uh, uh, via the icicles falling from the sky. And you've got a very interesting and nice build uh, that uh, once the bug surfix would be very fun to play. And I hope you enjoy it pretty much sums up the build. If you'd like to get notified when I upload more content you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss the content update notifications. The content you would expect to see on my channel is builds and guides and uh, info news uh, videos as well as other type of content for wooters uh, of all sorts, uh, RPGs, uh, ARPGs, uh, tactical RPGs, shooter wooters and other things in between. Thanks for watching, keep it cool, struck up, and until next time.